Let's talk about number three. You must play big, not just long. Now, this is a big one. Some people, whether it's at work making a presentation, a guest on television, a date with somebody they want to form a relationship with, they confuse quantity with quality. Shallow brooks are noisy. Still water runs deep. I've had so many experts on Dr. Phil, and I can tell you I've never heard anybody the day after one of them was on say, wow, that expert on Dr. Phil yesterday, did you hear how long she talked? Never heard anybody say that. But I've sure heard people say, that expert on Dr. Phil yesterday, did you hear what she said? You got to play big, not long. You don't want anything you say to get lost in a sea of minutia. Let everybody else fight for floor time. Let everybody else fight for the microphone in the meeting. Let everybody else stick their hand up 10 different times. When you speak, have something to say. Speak with gravity. Make a pronouncement. Play big. Play dramatic. Take a position. It's just not enough to keep your head down, work hard, put in your time, and expect a reward at the end. Because that end may never come. It used to be different. But we're a highly transient society now. And if you want to get ahead in this world, if you want to be noticed by somebody you want a relationship with, if you want to get a promotion at work, if you want to get a sale, if you're in sales, you need to rise above the noise. What have we said already? We've said, number one, you've got to define your image. We've said, number two, you have to be perceived as unique. And number three, you got to play big. You got to do something that pops, that pops you from the rest of the crowd. You don't want to be part of the wallpaper. You want to be part of the figure that pops out of the background. You know, current events have shown us that long term employees are the first to go when there's a downturn. Now, you'd think it would be the other way around, right? Because they've been loyal and they've been there. But you know what? They're the highest paid. So if you're going to cut, 50 employees? Are you going to cut the 50 that are absorbing most of the payroll? Or are you going to cut the 50 that are the cheapest? Well, they're going to lose a lot of wisdom when they cut those that have been there a long time, but they're just trying to make their number. So they're going to come in and cut those high-priced employees and replace them with new blood. So if you just keep your head down, tail up, working hard, you just rank and file, you're going to file right out the door. You got to be unique and you got to play big. So when they start thinning the herd, they go, oh, wait a minute, not her, not him. You you can take those other 44 over there, but you better cut this one out of the herd because this one is unique. This one has really distinguished themselves. And you do that by playing big. You do that by taking positions. You do that by coming up with solutions. You do that by creating memorable moments. I would a whole lot rather create a memorable minute and 18 seconds than bore an audience for 20 minutes. When it's your turn to be in the spotlight, whether it's home, whether it's at work, whether it's in a social setting, you want to establish yourself in a strong way. You want to play it big. You need to be the one who makes an impression. When they leave, go home, go to lunch, you want them buzzing about what you said, about what you did, about how you looked. You want to make an impression. You have to stand out in a positive, constructive way and decide how you're going to do that before you get there. This means taking the initiative. I saw a situation not too long ago right on the Paramount lot where two people came in that were being added to a production staff. 
And there were two desks that were going to be occupied by these two production staff. One of them faced the door of the executive producer. The other one faced a wall. And the HR person was there, and I just happened to be there getting ready to do something else. And the HR person said, y'all can pick a desk. Does either one of you have a preference? And one of them stepped up and said, yeah, I'll take this one. You know which one she took? She took the one that faced the executive producer's door because every day that executive producer walks out the door, you know who they're going to look at? They're going to look at her. And if she's smart, she'll wear something red somewhere on her wardrobe every day. She'll pop and she'll have a big smile and she'll have something that makes her play big. And when that executive producer comes out frenzied, Afraid, looking for something, and particularly if it's not her job, she'll say, you know what? That's not my job, but if you'll give me 60 seconds, I'll find it for you. She will make herself indispensable. That other woman, she's going to be over there counting mortar joints, staring at the wall, because this person had a philosophy, assert myself. When I get an opportunity to take the initiative, I'm going to take it. I'm going to play big. I'm going to position myself in a way that works. So one was prepared. The other one wasn't. That one is starring in her own life. Sometimes it can be just that simple. Okay, I see by the clock on the wall that I need to stop. I don't want to play long. I want to play big. I've given you three things for your playbook. I have a total of 16. I want you to think about these three. Let me give you a little preview of what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about learning to claim and accept praise. We're going to talk about learning to become essential. We're going to talk about knowing what your real currency is. We're going to talk about something called Goals Acquisition Training, G-A-T how to set a goal and achieve it realistically, how to build a timeline and an action plan. We're going to work on this playbook, and you are going to become equipped to get what you go after. And once you get your mind around this, once you get your hands around this, Think what an edge you have over the people sitting next to you, around you, that haven't been in on this conversation. They come to work just like they have every day for the last five or ten years. They walk down the mall just like they have before. I want you to have an edge. I want you to live on purpose. So we've covered three. There are 16, and some of those have subparts. Now, what I would like for you to do between now and when we talk next is really work on this image. Who do you want to project to be? What are your strengths? How can you be unique? How can you star in your own life? Ask people, hey, what do you think my biggest strength is? Ask 10 people, what do you think I'm best at? What do you think my biggest strength is? Now they go, what are you pulling for compliments? As a matter of fact, yes, I am. I want to know what you think my strengths are. Why are you asking that? Does it matter? What do you think are my strengths? I'm making a list. I'm checking it twice. Write your own things down. Look back. See what's worked for you across time. Really build out your list of strengths. Build out your image. Because I want you to change enough that people are going to notice there's something different about him. There's something different about her. They're carrying themselves different. I don't know. They just seem more together. So I want you to really pay attention to that. Work on this image. Work on your strengths. Work on how to define your uniqueness. Because that's going to be the core of where we go.